I'm sure if you've ever visited London, you've experienced some of London's popular river cruises. Huge boats that take you up and down the Thames and introduce you to London's famous river sites. However, did you know just half an hour outside the centre of London resides the UK's biggest inland marina? I've been invited here today to share a luxury cruise up the River Thames with a close friend of mine. The inland marina is called Penton Hook and is just a stone's throw from Heathrow Airport, which is right behind me. And our ride today is the Driftwood, that lovely motor cruiser over there. Let's jump on board. Permission to come aboard, Captain Malcolm. Permission granted. Thank you very much. The first half an hour on Driftwood was spent getting her ready for the trip upstream. Penton Hook, like I said, is Britain's largest inland marina. It's set in 80 acres and has 575 berths. It's on one of the loveliest reaches of the River Thames, close to the vibrant town of Staines on Thames, and about a mile downstream from Runnymede, where King John signed the Magna Carta. The site provides has four first-class facility buildings, which include showers, toilets. There are purpose-built pontoons for narrowboats and Dutch barges, including a number of moorings for vessels up to 30 meters. There is also a private yacht club, which organizes a full program of activities. Getting out of the marina is not easy. It's a tight squeeze around some of these corners, but with Malcolm's expertise and maritime experience, we navigated our way out the marina, which probably took up to 20 minutes. Once we get out of the marina, um, I'm going to grab a chat with Captain Malcolm. He's going to tell us about the boat and the route we're going to be taking today. So we're coming out of the marina now then, Malcolm? We're out of the marina and we're now on the feeding river off the Thames into the marina. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the uh, waterway's opened up here, hasn't it? So we've exited uh, Penton Hook Marina and um, what what is, uh, first of all, can I ask you about the boat, Malcolm? What, what type of vessel is this? It's a motor cruiser built by a company called Westwood in 2008. Mm. It's, um, there's a plaque over there that tells you the details of the boat. It's a Category B boat, um, which means it uh, can handle, or is, should be able to handle, uh, winds up to a uh, speed of eight, um, Storm 8 and Force 8 and also waves up to 4 metres, although I'm not sure I'd like to try it. Um, it's it's a, the hull shape is semi-displacement. Yeah. Um, now it's, it's quite luxurious um, from what I can see. How many, how many berths is it? It's, uh, it can sleep six, uh, but basically it's more comfortable with four. It's got a twin berth at the, at the bow of the boat um, and at the rear aft cabin, double berth. But the dining area converts also into a, into a double berth, yeah. so you could get six, but more comfortable with four.
mean, there's nothing better than pottering down the River Thames in a luxury cruiser, just watching the world go by. It's, it's a absolutely gorgeous and unique experience. What is our route today? We are leaving Penton Hook and we're going down um, easterly, um, in other words towards London, although we're not going that far. Uh, we're going down to Chertsey first of all, through Chertsey Lock. And then after that, carry on to Shepperton and through Shepperton Lock, and then carry on past Walton on Thames to Sunbury, and we go through Sunbury Lock, immediately do a U-turn, and we'll moor up and have lunch down that area. Well, that's I'm, I'm looking forward to that in a traditional River Thames uh, pub, pub lunch. There lovely. are two very lovely pubs down there. I'm so. just just for people who don't know, can you explain what the purpose of a lock is when we get to a lock? Because <coughs> this. This and the difference between a tidal river and a non-part of it, you know, well, a non-part of yeah, tidal on river. The, on the, I mean, obviously, we have two tides a day in England uh, from yeah. the sea coming in. Uh, the tide coming on the River Thames, um, it is tidal up as far as a place called Teddington. Okay. And um, so anything from the estuary up to Teddington is tidal, and you have to obviously be careful. Um, I was talking to someone yesterday because I want to go down to the Tower of London and, and go into St Catherine's Dock and it's advisory only to go within an hour and a half of high tide, either an hour and a half before up to high tide and an hour and a half afterwards. If you went to low tide you probably would get grounded. <laughs> So meaning grounded, meaning the hole would just... It would just get stuck at the bottom and you'd stuck. have to wait for a high tide to float you off again. Oh, so you'd, how long would you have to wait if that happened? Another uh, till the hours. next tide, and that could be four or five hours or six <laughs> hours or whatever. So, uh, <coughs> How long have you been sailing? Uh, <laughs> of a motor cruiser, only just over a year. But I had a canal boat for five years, I believe it was. And uh, nearly every year it was moored up just outside the Thames, up uh, a place called Uxbridge. And every year we used to bring it down to Brentford out onto the Thames and then spend the summer on the Thames with it. Mm. So I'm fairly used to the Thames. I can imagine. And how often do you like to get out, Mal? Uh, and, well, being retired, as soon as the sun comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Captain Malcolm, we're approaching our first lock, is that correct? This is Chertsey Lock, yes. Yeah. And we're going to, as the lock gates aren't open at the moment, we'll more up on the left, just before the lock. Yeah. And we'll wait. If there's a lock keeper on duty, which we hope it, he will operate the lock. But yeah. if there's a blue sign out saying self-service, then we'll have to go and operate the lock ourselves. So what happens then? You actually, you'll go out? We uh, yes. One of the crew, Ray, who obviously the... knows what he's doing, will go out and he will either fill the lock up empty the lock, whatever knee's doing, wow. in order to be able to open the gates to let us in. Okay. Know. Okay, so we're in the lock now. Um, we get the vessel roped up, and then the water is going to um, lower down to the same level as the water over there, and the gates will open and we'll be on our way. You can actually see the uh, the lower river section in front of us. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird, but very clever. So this is Ray, Ray's uh, crew today. Um, yes. He knows the boat back to front. What's it like working for Captain Malcolm Sparrow? Horrendous, horrendous. No wonder they all jump ship on uh, Bounty. <laughs> Has he ever made you walk the plank? No, he gives me a toothbrush to clean the front. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the whole process just took about five minutes for that. Um, it's a fairly, fairly quick affair. It's a quiet day, it's a Wednesday. And um, we're down, we've dropped down about five feet. Some, yeah, and we're through the lock. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we're through uh, 
we're through and the river has widened quite a bit here. Um, and yeah, and we just keep going on our route to Sunbury. This is um, Abel Seaman Dennis, who's already been um, um, at Dri the helm today, driving, <laughs> driving I suppose you call it, driving the right. yacht, driving the motorboat. Right. Um, sure how did you find it? Might be able to hold it. It was relatively easy actually. I've yeah? only, only done it once before on a much smaller boat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, once you get the hang of it, you don't have to do too much turning, so it was fine. You did an excellent job. I didn't, um, have, didn't have my glasses on at the time, but I could still see. Well, we didn't hit an iceberg, no. so that's the good news. And um, how are you enjoying it so far today? It's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely this gorgeous. This is the life. This is the life. <laughs> so when are you going to buy your yacht? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Better to use somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> these, these locks are very pretty and very well maintained. Um, I love the little uh, lock keeper's hut there. Um, it's gorgeous. <laughs> There really is nothing more peaceful and tranquil than travelling along this, this part of the River Thames. It's, um, it's, it's an incredible day out and I was so lucky to be invited by Malcolm. I'd really recommend a river cruise in this non-tidal part of the River Thames. And the great thing is there are plenty of pubs dotted along the river banks. And of course, we'll be stopping at one of those very soon. How easy is the driftwood to steer and drive? It's um, very easy in open water. It's very much like a car. You just make fine adjustments rather than um, uh, okay. uh, otherwise the boat will. So it's very easy in the straight. The difficulty more really comes in and out of locks yeah. and uh, also in and out of the marina when in you're trying to moor up. Now this seems like quite a wide part of the river Thames. It's uh, very easy, so do you want to take the helm? Uh, give Dennis a rest? Really? Uh, is that, is that a good? Well? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, no problem. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Let me give it a go. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, nervous. This is incredible. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I never thought I'd get the chance to 
drive a motor yacht like me. this. We've been on the river now for about two hours, so it's time to stop off at a riverside pub and have a traditional riverside pub lunch. And here we are in gorgeous Sunbury. We've just moored up and the pub is just over there. Let's go take a look. Big, we've made it to the Phoenix, and as you can see, we are having some wonderful riverside fare. Um, and I think it's glasses up to Malcolm. Thank you very much for this wonderful day. It has uh, been absolutely fantastic, and I'm looking forward to the journey back. Cheers. This is what you call luxury boating on the Thames. Fully refreshed and ready for our journey back, we made our way to the Driftwood, meeting some delightful river folk on the way. out of interest, Malcolm, what are the expenses involved in running a, 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 a vessel like this on the Thames? Not, not particularly this vessel, but any vessel. Any vessel. Yeah. Um, most of the costs relate to the length of the boat, to be honest with you. Yeah. So the charges are normally per foot for the okay. length of the boat. But obviously once you purchase the boat, you've then got to find a mooring and most of that time it's in a marina. Yeah. So to keep a boat in a marina yeah. throughout the year, whether you're out cruising and you come back to it or whether you leave it there over winter, uh, that charge is per foot, depending on okay. the length and of the And how many feet are you here with, I'm with um, just driftwood? under 39 foot, so I'm... Okay. Yeah. okay. I, uh, I think they charge, because the boat is called a Westwood 38, they charge me up for 38 feet. But in so you got a, you got a foot free? I've got 11 inches free. <laughs> well... Um, comes in handy sometimes. I yeah, <laughs> and uh, after that, the cost of uh, you need to buy a license to operate the boat on the river. It's and who do you buy that from? You buy that from the Environment Agency. Yeah, it's a bit like car tax in a way, but you okay. you have to buy a license to run on the Thames. Yeah. Uh, again, that's based on the length of the boat per foot. Uh, and then the only other cost you've got is insurance because they won't uh, give okay. you a license unless you can prove that you've insured the boat. So you have to insure the boat. And what does the insurance cover? Uh, taking on passengers? Uh, if or? it's fully comprehensive, it colours obviously loss of damage through accident, fire, theft, all the usual. Yeah. Um, you can buy a third party insurance, which basically covers the person you may have an accident with. That's your cost, but you don't okay. get your boat repaired. So it's a bit like vehicle licences. It's it, very, very similar to a car it, insurance. It's yeah. very similar. And are there bespoke insurers that do that type of insurance oh, yes, for a boat? Oh, yes, quite a few boat insurers, yeah. Okay, many, but uh, many, yeah, yeah, you get many. a special boat You can actually, insurance. when you buy a boat even, you can actually mortgage a boat. I mean, there are quite a few companies that will allow you to put a deposit down and lend you the rest of the money, really? and then you pay for it like you pay for a movie. Okay, yeah. Probably so not over such a long period of years. Mm. Maybe only be five years or something but it's a similar thing. If to you're not a cash buyer, yeah. for instance, yeah, yeah absolutely. So.
No, oh, and and um, and then you've just got the regular maintenance and the fuel just and just like that. a car. You've just got, like a yeah, car. You've, you've got the maintenance and the fuel. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. Thanks very much. You're welcome. So, thanks for watching Secrets of London with me, Mark Munro. And a huge thank you to Malcolm for let, taking us out in Driftwood today. Yeah, most welcome. It's been a real pleasure for me and Dennis and Ray uh, for all your time. help and um, for all the maritime knowledge you know about boats and of course all that knowledge you know as well Malcolm. So um, yeah, what a fantastic day. Stay tuned, leave any comments down below. If you enjoyed the, uh, enjoyed the episode, why not subscribe until next time from the River Thames and from the beautiful Driftwood. Bye. Bye. Dennis, Bye. can you wave? Yeah.